I'm very surprised that the Church of Christ, they're, uh, they're pretty much growing now on the internet and even in our community. So uh, when I was at Southern California, I, I rarely saw any of these churches running around anywhere. But in here, I was very surprised in Northern California how many different minority groups were getting attracted to the Church of Christ movement. So the Church of Christ... They are going to use two verses to prove water baptism for salvation. Now, in this teaching, I'm going to show you a really neat trick. I'm going to show you the two verses that they use to prove water baptism for salvation actually is their enemy. It demolishes water baptism for salvation. So this might be very useful. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3, and we will read verse 21. <coughs> the like figure... We're unto even baptism, doth also now save us, not putting, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Notice right here that baptism, it does not put away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you'll notice right here the first line of verse 21. Baptism saves us. See that? Save us. So thus, water baptism saves us, they'll argue. But this becomes worse when you look at verse 20, which sometime were disobedient, where once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. So you'll notice at verse 20, they were saved by water. So thus, it proves that water baptism saves us. That's their argument. But we're going to uh, easily debunk this. How we know that water baptism does not save us is because, you'll notice right here, it says saved by water, right? Now, let me ask you a simple question. Was, did Noah and his family get baptized? Did they even touch the water? No, they didn't even touch the water at all. You'll notice that if they did touch the water, were they saved or were they damned if they touched the water? They were damned. The whole world, they got baptized by the water flood. Not Noah. The whole world got into the water at Noah's flood, but not Noah's family. If they touched the water, they would have been damned. They would not have been saved. You see that right there? So it proves that uh, Noah and his family, they did not get baptized by water for salvation. If they did touch the water, they would have been damned, and they would have went to hell. But what does this mean, saved by water? It means that they were saved out of the water. They were saved without the water touching them. Well, I don't believe that. No. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. You got to understand that the Bible's way of language, when it says saved by something, it can actually mean that you were saved out of it. You were saved by, you were saved by the skin of your teeth, so to speak. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 3. And you'll notice right here what the Word of God says, that at verse 15, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be what? Saved. So notice right here that the man's work is burned, but he himself is saved out of the fire. He himself is not burned. But look at the next phrase, yet so as what? By fire. By fire. See that? So this word, this phrase, they're only looking at saved in water. They don't look at the whole phrase. They don't take the word of God literally like we do. This whole phrase is there for a we reason, you got to understand. The reason why, it's because it's giving you the idea that Noah and his family, they were saved out of the water, not getting in the water, right. not getting water baptized. It's the total opposite. But this gets even better for our Church of Christ friends. Look at this part, 1 Peter 3, 21. Where unto even baptism doth also now save us, correct? How does it save us? It says, not... Not, mark it down, not the putting of, of, away of the filth of the flesh. That's the thing. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Rather, it's saving us because of what? The answer of a good conscience.
toward God. In other words, water baptism doesn't save us from the sins of our flesh. It has nothing to do with spiritual salvation. Baptism saves us in giving us a good conscience about it. That's why we believe people, Christians, should practice water baptism. As the churches before, Bible-believing churches in the Bible, the Acts type of churches in the Bible, they got water baptized immediately after salvation. Likewise, we believe in that as well. But if you have the Holy Spirit of God in you, I don't even have to tell you that because I had people in this church coming to me without me bending their arms or talking to them about it, saying, hey, pastor, I want to get, uh, should I get water baptized? You know why? Because they're thinking that there's something important there. It's a conscience thing. See that? It's a conscience thing. Now, people might say, well, you just made that up. A filth of the flesh washing away our sins. No. Look at 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Ooh, they're not going to like this part right here. They don't, like any of it. they don't like any of it. They don't like any of it. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You're drying them off. Yeah, I'm drying them off really well. Yeah. <laughs> look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Chapter 7. 1 Corinthians, and then uh, actually I lied. It's, it is not 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I apologize. It's 2. <laughs> yes, I'm a heretic already. You got me. See that? <laughs> it's 2 Corinthians 7. 2 Corinthians, so let's put another one right there, like a Roman numeral. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. See, so you got to look at the scriptures. You can't believe what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> and verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See that? The context of the filth of the flesh, you'll notice, has to do with holiness, spirituality. So when baptism doesn't save us from what? The filth of the flesh spiritually it has to do with our sins. You've got to understand that fact. Now let's look at Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. Now here's their next verse to prove water baptism for salvation. Because it says the washing of regeneration. So because it says washing of regeneration, they automatically assume that has to do with water baptism. Now, you know what's really hilarious about this? Is that you'll see baptism is not mentioned at all, and you won't even see water mentioned at all. They automatically assume just because it says wash that it means water baptism. Okay, we're going to look at Titus chapter 3, and then we'll read verse 5. The Word of God reads, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the, notice, washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So this is their next proof text to prove water baptism for salvation. Now this is easily debunked because notice who washes you. What's the object that washes you? The washing of regeneration and renewing of who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So it's the Holy Ghost that washes you. It has nothing to do with water. It has nothing to do with baptism. Amen. It has to do with the Holy Ghost who washes you. That's easily debunked. But here's a goodie. If you go to Titus 3.5, their proof text, you can turn the tables on them as well. Because look at the first part. Not by what? Works, Works of righteousness yeah. which we have done. So notice right here that this washing of regeneration has nothing to do with works of righteousness. Now the Campbellites, or the Church of Christ, how they're going to argue is that some of them actually say that water baptism is not works for salvation. It's actually salvation by grace through faith. <laughs> no, really? Seriously? It's, baptism is not a work? Really? Work means putting action, putting effort. Right. See? You are putting action and effort to get inside the water to set things up for that, to find a pastor to dunk you in the water and etc. Now, the thing is this. Go to Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. 
I'll tell you what, Jesus Christ thought water baptism was a work of righteousness. Didn't you know that? Oh, no, he never thought that way. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Notice what the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 3, and we will read verse 14 through 15. Verses 14 through 15. What does the Word of God read right here? It says what Jesus thought about baptism. 14, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? See, Jesus is about to get baptized. What did Jesus say? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus doing this water baptism, it becometh us to what? Fulfill all righteousness. See that? Jesus considered water baptism to be a work of righteousness. He had to fulfill it. And Titus 3.5 said what? Not by what? Works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. So these two passages that they will use on you to prove water baptism for salvation turn out to be the best verses to prove water baptism is not salvation, actually. Now, <clears throat> you got to understand this, is that these people are just lost souls like you and I once were. Right. We're not saying all this because, oh, we know more than them, we're better than them, yada, yada, yada. No, we're not doing that. We're showing all this because... There are so many people who don't know about the truth. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. unfo it's a sad state that churches are not showing their members, teaching their members the truth. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is talking about little ditty devotionals and not feeding them. Yeah. You need to feed. You need to grow. That way you can see, oh, I never saw that that's before. Listen, those people would be better than I am if they went by the Bible and knew about the truth. Yeah. But because people choose to go by their own denomination, and yeah, I'm including the Baptist church too, like us, because people go by their own religion, denomination, and what the pastor says, like robots, they sit down and they don't even check. That's right. So you see, we're not, uh, you got to understand this. We're not saying this because we're better than them. It's because it's a sad state that people are not showing the truth and somebody's got to tell them. Yeah. And the reason why we may know scripture more than them or we may look better than them is because we're not. It's because they don't look at the scriptures. That's why. That's the reason why. If they did, they'd probably be better than us. It's really sad. It's really sad. And you got to understand this. What, what did Jesus Christ do? Jesus Christ, when people chose a wrong religion and a wrong belief, Jesus Christ, he even used sarcasm and criticism yeah. against them. Sure. Why? Because the people chose what they wanted to believe in, what they wanted to stick in. And as uh, one brother said right here, if you want the truth that bad, you wouldn't care how it was delivered. Right. You wouldn't care if you were spitting upon, beaten up, or kicked. If you want the truth that bad, you will crawl on your knees and get it that bad. Amen. That's the thing. But see, people don't want that. They want it at the right tone, the right delivery, the smooth package and nice setup. That's the thing. That's the unfortunate world we live in, unfortunately. It's really sad.